Headlines sponsored by Abdina Gandhi from the blog Python Street. Prime Minister Narendra Modi will interact with the Jan Aushadi Kendra owners and beneficiaries of the Jan Aushadi Yojana today. The interaction will be followed by the address of the Prime Minister on the occasion on the theme Jan Aushadi Jan Upyogi. As Uttar Pradesh votes in the final leg of assembly elections, a voter turnout of 8.58% was recorded till 9 a.m. on Monday. The highest percentage was recorded in Mao at 9.99%, followed by Jaunpur 8.99% and Varanasi 8.93%. Prime Minister Narendra Modi said on Sunday that even big countries found it difficult to evacuate their citizens stuck in war on Ukraine, but India has successfully evacuated thousands of students. The government has launched Operation Ganga to evacuate Indian citizens, mostly students from Ukraine, which has been attacked by Russia. Amid the Russian military operation in Ukraine, German ambassador to India Walter J. Lindner lauded India for its excellent diplomatic service. German envoy also urged the countries to stand together against the prevailing situation in the war-hit country. Headlines brought to you by Abhinav Gandhi from the blog. Thank you for tuning into Honbal TV. I'm Akivito and now the news in details. The government of India has made it its top priority to ensure that all Indians stuck in Ukraine are evacuated and for that process they have started the Operation Ganga which has been started through the leadership of our Prime Minister Narendra Modi and that has been continuing till today. Well, today six flights will be going and now talking about the success of Operation Ganga, we have with us, with us, we've got one inhabitant of Nagaland who's also just returned from Ukraine yesterday and we'll speak to her and we'll find out more about the struggles and also how life was in Ukraine before Putin actually announced a special military operation against Ukraine. Thank you so much, Shirley, for joining with us. Uh, well, first of all, I would like to, like, I don't want to get into the grim details at first, so I would like to start off by how was life in Ukraine before the war actually started. I mean, like, what was your daily routine? You were there in a medical college. So which part of Ukraine were you studying in? I was studying in, hi, my name is Shelly Kumari. I was studying in Zephrosia State Medical University. Actually, like uh, in February only, our batches, like our courses, like before in like uh, January, there will be a holiday. From February, our semester is going to start. Like online classes already started also. But in sudden, that war has been started. Like morning, like if I say about my everyday schedule, like morning, we have to wake up, online classes, breakfast and all this was going on but suddenly when war started then some problems we face our online classes has been stopped suddenly all these problems all right so okay uh, on the 23rd night it was vladimir putin the president of russia who made that special uh, televised coverage in which he said that uh, russia is going to have a special military operation and then but how was it before how was it for the days 28th to 24th or rather the month of February how was it did the universities give you any warning notification as to you know you shouldn't be alone and you know there, there might be a preemptive attack from Russia so were you guys informed about anything were you guys given notification no nothing like that actually like students when they when we get to know that war is going to be then students got panic also we was talking with our Dean we asked also that can we is it true can we go to our country then Dean was like no nothing is like that no need to be panic we are with you then some students book ticket also and they went they came back to India like some of my friends like one day before only like the war the day the first day when bomb blast in Kiev yes. my some of my friends was there only they were supposed to come back to India but they seen that when bomb blast they was in Kiev only they seen by their eyes they was very much scared and like uh, we then we got to know then also our Dean was like from that day actually real war started and from that day we asked our Dean also then Dean was not saying anything before that we was like very much panic we were asking continuously that can we go back to a country there was like no nothing is like that don't want to be panic they were saying continuously like that so all right so okay fine uh, on the 24th the ghastly attack started you know and 
uh, I think uh, according to the reports that we are receiving, most of the attacks happen either in midnight or early morning. So what was life like after the 24th, after the actual invasion started? And what was your journey like? Where were you? How did you get into a group? Who was there to arrange those transportation? Who was there to look after you guys? Uh, actually, in our like in Ukraine, in every uh, in Ukraine in every college there will be Indian dean also, and Ukrainian dean will also be there. Uh, in our college, there is Divya Ma'am. Divya Ma'am is uh, Indian dean for us. She will take care of all Indian students. And uh, like uh, when there will be a sign, whenever like uh, in every uh, in every city there will be like if siren will be if siren sound will come, it, there will be two type of siren. If siren sign will be, one sign will be for curfew, and other sign will be like we have to if other sign will be uh, come then we have to run we have to go to bunkers there it was like that then we was very scared about that and whenever sound we have like before like if uh, like something will happen like bomb blast or something siren will come and after that whenever siren will come we have to run and we will go everyone will go to bunkers like they told us before only like everyone have to keep food with the, us like food water some snacks uh, because in bunkers we won't get anything so before only we took everything and whenever siren sound will come we will run to bunkers it was like that. All right. So, I mean, like, when you talk about, for Indians, uh, we've got the Operation Ganga that is actually applying at the moment to evacuate all Indian citizens. But what about your Ukrainian friends? I mean, their government is stuck fighting the war with Russia. So, how helpless were they? And what about the other foreign nationals? Like, uh, you talk about from any other country, European countries or another continent. So, were they also being helped in the evacuation process or were they, like, stuck? In like when evacuation process has been started, like in our college, like from many different different countries, students are there, like from Moroccans, Nigerians are there, uh, Indians of course, and many like different different countries people are there. And uh, whenever like uh, evacuation, like when we was like they was evacuated out with us, Nigerian Moroccan student was also evacuated. Like but when uh, when wars, we all became together. We was like one only, no Indian, no other Moroccan, no Nigerian. We was one. Everyone have to run together. It was like that and. Yeah. All right, so how did your journey start? I mean, like, were you guys grouped together? Did you guys make a decision for yourself that, yeah, we need to actually get to the border? Uh, or was there like a notification or rather, was this because someone gave you a notification, that's how you started your journey? In in our college, uh, our dean make some volunteers. We was for, they were saying what we have to do. We was following them only. Our dean, because of her only, we are very safe. Because of her, she arranged everything. Like she was talking continuously with Indian embassy in night only. Like today, like when they targeting our college, like that was when they targeted yes. before that only. Like morning, early in the morning, she evacuated everyone. Like not only Indians, Nigerians also. We like from our college, everyone evacuated. There was two trains. Two trains was there. Two days we journey in train and um, like in whenever we when we went on train on that time we don't like maximum people don't have food on that time two days did, it was difficult for us like no food no water and uh, at night after nine in train light was closed uh, they told us to keep our phone in flight mode we was like little bit scared but no problem all students was there in that train some ukrainian ukrainian peoples was also there so in two train indian students was there they like we cross border for crossing border by train after that by bus again train again bus it was like that and after that we reached budapest early in the morning after two days of journey in train we reached budapest after coming budapest we was like okay now we are in other country we are safe all right all right oh we've been getting reports that indian students were heckled uh, in the railway before getting into the uh, trains and also there have been reports where the security guards of uh, could be the ukrainians or the border people posted in the border there have been reports where like they have been charged like you have to pay a bribe of two hundred dollars one hundred dollars to get into the train did any incident like this happen to you no no nothing was happened with us with us like we didn't have to pay also everything every like train ticket everything our dean has she has arranged we didn't have to go with all these problems all right so now uh, going ahead what about your career i mean uh, you might be in the second year if fourth I'm, year. Uh, fourth year but what about you've just got one year to complete and now has your college given you approval for online classes? Have they approved that you can complete your year and you can get your degree? And also, what about those first and second year students who just started their uh, medical career in Ukraine? What are some of the uh, benefits that have been given to them? Have they 
given you any strong words stating that all right you can complete your studies in a year or two and we'll try and accommodate all citizens uh, first thing I am like in Ukraine there will be MBBS of sixth year not sixth. for fifth year in okay. India it will be like that so now uh, I am in fourth year two more year was left like not two like recently now only I was promoted for fourth year three more year was left and uh, about first year second year they didn't give any word about any students because now war is going on so no idea there will be online classes or offline classes and yeah if we get chance to go back to Ukraine definitely we will like to go Ukraine like our um, college memories, everything is there only. Of course, we like to go back to Ukraine only. All right. Coming back to the thing, I mean, like, for you personally, do you think uh, for the Americans, the the United States of America had issued an advisory for all its citizens, students especially, to vacate, and they gave this notification in a month's timing, you know, one month ahead. But for us, uh, it was kind of late. So do you think that the Indian government should have acted a little early in warning you people that you know there could be some catastrophe happening there in Ukraine so it would be advised if you could leave so do you think that the Indian government was a little too late to inform yeah, you guys yeah that's true not too it was if I say honestly that it was more left because because there was too late because Indian students was continuously asking that can we go to back our country war is going on no one was saying anything we some people talk with Indian Embassy also Indian Embassy but Indian Embassy said yeah people you have to go back to India but our college didn't like not in my but in some colleges Dean was said that if you go you will be expelled from the college because of that expel and, and all this mess some student students were scared so many no one went but many of the students they were like okay I will go what will happen we will see at our at their risk students some students came back to India also but maximum people didn't came to India so yeah in this all right in Okay, now coming back, you were just saying, you know, like you had to carry your own food. Could you share with us a little experience as to like, uh, we have been getting reports, especially from the other three, uh, our Nagas and our inhabitants who have just returned. They were telling like they had to walk around 40 to 45 kilometers where they didn't get food. They want, they had the money to buy the food, but they, the chance was not there for them to get in the queue. So, were there experiences like that you experienced? Yeah, that is true. Like uh, in our, like in our, like because of our dean, we didn't face much problem. But in other colleges, like uh, when they said to us to go, we have to be safe. We have to go to bunkers. They said to b take food also. When we went in Ethiopia, in all shops, food was not there. In ATM cash, we have money in our card, but in ATM money is not there. So we are one to this little bit some problems was there, especially from the, for those students who cross Poland border for there it was a very difficult time because some many students are missing from Poland border also and they situation like they face many problem like Ukrainian go look Ukrainian army was not behaving properly because because they are saying your India government is supporting Russia and you are in our country because of this thing many like some pe girls are harassed also like yes. they harassed some girls they, they had beaten some boys also we didn't have to walk anywhere we was like train buses train buses back to back for us was there all right how about your other friends uh, do you know any of your friends that are still stuck in ukraine no 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 from our college i guess almost everyone came all right now moving forward i mean uh, how was it like actually being i mean for us we barely even know the meaning of war we've only read it in history but you were actually part of it so how traumatizing was this experience for you uh, like in our side when we was there we just heard the sound of bomb when they uh, when Zafrosia railway station has been blast we yes. heard that sound but we didn't see from our eyes then for after that sound we was scared but I don't know but by eyes we didn't see all that but we scared about that but my friends some like the, those people who was stuck in Kiev the first day when they blast yes. they that people had been seen by their eyes okay. so they are more scared all right uh, and you are an Indian national who was in Ukraine and then the whole evacuation process started. Did you find a sense of security when you were with your own uh, Indian counterparts together as a group, you guys were traveling? So what was the main motto or belief amongst you all and amongst you as a group? So did you feel secure even in a time where insecurity is something that is talk, talked about so much? 
when we was traveling on that time all student was together we was like everyone was like trying to divert our mind from that all this thing when light was closed when they said to keep our phone in flight mode on that time we was scared because train was also stopped in middle of the night and every in train not a single light was there it was totally dark so for some time but after that it was everything normal all right now in your college too i'm sure there would have been ukrainian students were there any students i mean like if you look at the pres president of ukraine volodymyr zelensky he's taken up arms to protect his country we've got the klitschko brothers the champions of boxing who've also taken up arms we've got members of the parliament of ukraine uh, in fact they're women who've taken up arms and they're still doing everything they can to protect their nation and protect ukraine so uh, was there anyone amongst your group that actually said i'm going to stay back and i'm going to fight for my country amongst your ukrainian friends no 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 from like if you talk about indian no indian was there <laughs> but ukrainian yeah of course many ukrainian people some are cook some are chef many videos also viral yes. like normal civilians are coming yes. and fighting at the border many are there like that like some 70s like 70 years of grandmother yes. grandfather they are fighting in the border for their country many people are there from like like that but indians are no 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 all right fine uh, you've now how did you reach india i mean like you i think you reached dimapur last night so how was your journey from uh, ukraine to budapest then i guess to istanbul as a stop yeah. and then you come to india so how was your journey who welcomed you at the airport when you reached india Delhi, some minister was there who welcomed us. We didn't know about him, but yeah, in every like when like in every terminal, some ministers was there to welcome us. They was providing food also, and in flight there was no problem for us. India government was like taking care of us very nicely. Very nicely, they are providing food, coffee, everything. In flight, we didn't have any problem. All right, so. would you want to give credit to the indian government or would you want to give credit to the romanian government who actually saw that you crossed the border safely saw that you were transported safely so what is your thing if there is someone to thank who would that be apart from your dean which is miss divya yeah. apart from that who would you want to thank first of all of course romain because we stayed there yes. they only help us to cross the border right and in after reaching their country also we didn't face in like in ukraine we don't get like any indian food but after reaching in their country they are providing us like they kept us in very nice hotel like everyone was like okay peacefully like, calmly we are like first of all we are very scared after reaching there like we are like okay fine everything is fine we are in safe zone right now and food everything water they are providing time Time to time, and they kept us very nicely. So first of all, of course, we will thankful to them. After that, Indian Indian government. All right. I mean, like, see, you are you are somebody who just crossed Ukraine into Romania, and yeah. they are neighboring countries. What's the difference? <laughs> <laughs> like when crossing what like what should i say i don't know but like in ukraine like we were scared the war was going on everything and romania after like we was like okay we reach in safe country now we are in safe zone no problem all right okay now moving forward with your career you know i mean like what's in store for shirley kumari is she is she still going to pursue with her mbbs course or is she going to wait because the indian government has made some plans to accommodate ukrainian students pursuing the mbbs they've said all right we will allow you to continue your mbbs course in uh, india itself but then to enter into the mbbs you've got lakhs and lakhs of aspirants sitting the entrance exam and then you get a placement to any of the medical colleges in india it could be guwahati it could be rajasthan it could be kota it could be anywhere so what is shirley kumari's plan and is she happy that the indian government has decided to let MBBS students who are pursuing their career in Ukraine to continue in India are you happy with that decision If I speak honestly I didn't think about this because last day, last night only I came here but if they are providing all this for us first of all like if I get chance to go I will go back to Ukraine I won't stay in India because because of if i have to stay in india then why should i go there we didn't get in, in need they are like in there are some caste like sc st general because of all this thing here i don't want to be here I, if i speak honestly i will go back to ukraine i will continue my study from ukraine only all right surely like let's talk more i want to we want to get some more details into your evacuation process so all right 
what was the registration like? Uh, did you have to register in the Ukraine Indian Embassy and then after you reached Romania, what was the registration like? Like wherever we are reaching, some forms was, many forms we filled from Indian Embassy, many like from Indian Embassy only form was coming. Like if we reach like border, okay, we have to fill one form. If we reach Romania, okay, we have to fill again one form. After reaching Budapest, again we yes. fill form. After reaching every borders and we are crossing, no, we have to fill forms. It was like All right, so after the war started, the Operation Ganga had started, in which we've got multiple airlines actually flying because of this Operation Ganga. So which flight did you take and did you have to pay any fare for your tickets and did you have to pay anyone uh, for your ticket to come back to India? No, no, no. I didn't have to pay anyone and the flight from Indigo, we ca I came okay. and that was very nice. Air hostess, everyone was like, they gave us lots of facility, everything, no problem, nothing was in flight very nicely. So, so so you didn't have to pay any no no no, no. We, i don't have to pay anywhere because there were reports stating like initially when the war hit on the 24th there were indian citizens who actually booked the tickets for twenty thousand. then on the 25th the price shot up to about sixty thousand to eighty thousand. before war it was like that right. before war it was like that like suddenly the ticket prices has been increases we also seen our dean said but then also we was listening what ukraine russia putin was saying that war will be there war will be there we was listening that also so because of that reason many people what many everyone was seeing the prices of ticket suddenly ticket prices has been increases that is true but uh, now after this war now uh, because of Indian government we came here on that time we didn't have to pay a single rupee also not for food not for water not for anything we didn't have to pay anywhere all right Hornbill TV was able to speak to Indigo director of communications uh, Miss Chavi and she said like the Indigo is doing everything it can to evacuate and it's part of their duty and it's part of the nationalism that they've started this uh, that they've collaborated with the operation gang how was your experience in the Indigo flight Indigo flight, my experience was like one of the best experience till now. So many times I fly, but Indigo now is my favorite because now they give us so much facility. It's like one of my favorite. Very nicely they take care of all all Indian students. Many students was there in flight. No one have any problem. It was very clean, very nice. Ear hostess, everyone was behaving very nicely. They were continually asking, ma'am, if you want anything, something you can say. It was like before if you go, we have to pay <laughs> at one time. But now nothing was like that. Again, again, whatever we want we can ask them all right miss chavi also mentioned something about all the indians in the plane you know like after they got into the plane and they're they're flying back to india so you know a, a sense of uh, pride and nationalism <laughs> struck to them and they were singing the uh, the national anthem they were singing songs of indian fervor so did you experience that no 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 <laughs> when i came in that flight nothing everyone was sleeping everyone was very tired so everyone was sleeping when food was coming everyone was working up eating again sleeping it was like that all right so now how about see the internet services might have got cut you know just before the war so how were you able to contact with your parents with your the caregivers not in every places like in ours in my city internet connection was there only two days when we travel in train because of some battery low and some network was not com network was not coming on train on that time only we faced my family was very not my everyone family was very scared because they are not able to contact with their children right so yeah two days everyone was very very much scared but after that after reaching like uh, border we talked with our family then shot right. it Prime Minister Narendra Modi made it a point that his minister should also take part, I mean like physically should take part in the evacuation process and that is why he has sent so many ministers to Hungary, to Romania, to Poland. Alright, when you came back to Delhi, when you reached Delhi, did you see any northeastern ministers welcoming you all? Northeastern minister I didn't see. All right. In fact, when I reached Delhi, I was shocked from like every state, everyone was there to take their children. But from Nagaland, no one was there. When people was asking me, ma'am, from where, where, which state you have to go? I said Nagaland. They was laughing and they were saying, ma'am, Nagaland ka to yaha koi bhi nahi hai. All they right. were saying like that. All then right. after that, but commissioner was there already. They contact with me. I filled the form they got, so they helped me. I contact with them. They uh, they only arrange everything. They kept me in Delhi Nagaland house. Yes. They take care of me. They only provided ticket for Dimapur. They only everything. They only. All did. right, fine. So from international boundaries, you didn't have to pay anything. No. After you reached Delhi to come back to Nagaland yesterday, did you have to pay anything? No. So it was all taken care by the government of Nagaland. Na government of Nagaland. And. Uh, do you have anything to say to the government of Nagaland and to the government of India? Uh, 
uh, I will say only one thing like it, it was stuck in my mind because like many people like from childhood only I am staying outside I won't stay that much in Nagaland last year only I came Nagaland after nine years I was studying outside in Delhi Kanpu but here like in Nagaland like whenever people ask me where is your hometown I will say Nagaland many of the Indians don't know only that Nagaland is there also in our map so that is like I was like Are, why people don't know it's there only Yesterday, like when I was staying in Delhi, I some officer, like some Jyoti sir was there. He called us he, with me. One more student was there. He was also from Nagaland only. He also same same point. Then sir was laughing. There was like, don't know why, but it happens. Like I was like Nagaland also become some popular. People should know. Many people don't know that Nagaland is also there in India. All right, thank you so much, Shirley, for sharing your life experiences and your journey from Ukraine, from Ukraine to India. And thank you so much for sharing with us the small details that you've experienced. We are so glad you're back and we are so glad you're back home and with your family and with your loved ones. And we hope that in the future too, you can aspire to become whoever you want to be. And we hope that you will fulfill all your dreams and ambitions. Yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. All right. So that was Shirley Kumari who just returned from Ukraine. And remember this, she returned through the Operation Ganga that the Prime Minister Narendra Modi had launched to evacuate Indian citizens. Well, we've heard a lot. We've heard the Ministry of External Affairs uh, S.J. Shankar, we've heard the Secretary Ministry of Affairs, Harsh Vardhan Shringla, we've also heard the spokesperson to the External Affairs uh, Ministry, Arindam Bakhti, who has said that for the government of India, the top priority is to evacuate all its Indian citizens from war on Ukraine. And successfully, they have been undergoing this evacuation process, and about now maybe 10,000 plus more Indian citizens stranded in Ukraine have been brought back to the country. Well, this is one success story of it. We've got, another, we've got thousands of students still stranded there and we hope that Operation Ganga will surely get to them. Well, for this hour, that was all in our bulletin. For more news and updates, stay tuned to Hornbill TV. Goodbye. Kali Langa Bacha or Adolescent Kan traditional or Nutun forms of digital media de Bishi immersed with Jaishe. Tosal Majude Moy Kan Diki Pai ki digital media used to Moy Kan para interactions or social media karne July. Especially Aji Kali Langa Bacha Kan para digital media easily access Kurbo Pare. Evidence Kan Koyase ki idu digital media exposure para Bacha Kan ge early learning.